Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice and happy month of Halloween. In honor of Halloween, I have donned my red panda ears for the day and we are going to be listening to some amazing Halloween music from Halloween. You guys have been requesting this so much and I've been saving it for this exact moment. I'm so excited. So this is going to be Halloween by Halloween and it's gonna be taken from their Pumpkins United tour. So we're gonna be hearing both Michael Kiske and Andy Darris. Let's get to it. Um, that was a really cool intro. Uh, and I was sitting there wondering, how did they have uh, so many of these projections on the front? And it's because they had a scrim in front. So that's really cool. It seems very dark and I was wondering what was up. So uh, that's explained. Uh, in addition, I love the way this was prepping the audience, right? It was really fun. And there's like a really, it's creepy. It uh, feels like a metal version of a Halloween house, which is awesome. Okay, let's catch that transition one more time. Oh, that's a little more. Yeah, that's cool. That's a great way to start. So I, I'm really excited the way that they're handing this off to each other. Uh, you have um, Andy who has long hair and Michael who has no hair. That's how I remember the two of them. I had to look at pictures again just to make sure I could catch them. Um, so anyhow, I, Andy's voice always sounds like it has a little bit more gravel in it to me. And Michael's has like a, a laser in it. It's very, um, it's like has like a, almost like a, an edge, like it's like a dart being thrown, but like lots and lots of little darts being thrown. And it definitely, there's a something reminiscent of Bruce Dickinson that I hear in both of their voices in this style, where it's just like tons of words, but keep them all in a really lovely line and tell a story at the same time. Okay, let's go back to uh, where they enter here. There The, the harmony that they broke into right there. And I just, I really appreciate, there's so much happening 
in the instruments, right? There's like just blast beats that are just <laughs> plowing across the music at this point. There's tons that's happening. And then you have this melody that is riding all on top of it that's really well supported and sustained the whole time. I kind of wonder what it's like singing on top of blast beats like that. I know from singing with a piano or a small ensemble of instruments or a full orchestra, the way that I sing can change. I think it's definitely um, more inspiring to sing in really long lines when you have an entire orchestra you're singing with. And a piano, you might have a little more uh, articulation or just a little more um, things that are chopped up. And that's probably because an orchestra is filled with lots of instruments that can draw long lines and a piano is more percussive in nature. So I wonder what the feeling is like when you've got just tons of blast beats underneath. Does that make you want to really continue to drum that support up the whole time? I don't know. It'd be really cool to ask one of these guys someday. Okay, let's go back a little bit. The rise in harmonies at that point was getting better and better and better. And then the jump to the top notes there. Oh, that's delightful. Wow. Great, great coordination, great technique on both of them. Whew. Let's listen to that one more time. Okay, their vibrato is just coordinated and it was really cool. Oh, it looks like they're even doing that on purpose, maybe doing some mouth movement to make it sound like it's... That is so awesome. Oh, so awesome. It's like almost like ghosts singing together. Uh, and I love that they went back to that high note right after, like, one wasn't enough, we're gonna give you two. It was very satisfying. Okay, one more time at this vibrato moment. It's, it's so fascinating to hear how they choose to uh, sing these phrases straight and then add vibrato a little bit in them. And both guys have essentially chosen the same area to add that vibrato. So they've chosen the same phrasing, the same expression. Obviously they're singing it with different voices, but they also both just have this ability to make it uh, cut the whole time, which is so essential when you have so much additional sound happening.
we've been seeing uh, a couple other images of people singing on mics and playing instruments, and uh, I know that there are some backups that can be sung in the band. I'm not hearing them, so I'm wondering if it's taken from the same performance or maybe if they're doubling another line that's happening. Not sure. Um, but uh, I just wanted to point that out. Maybe I'll hear it and catch it later. I'll go back a little bit to see if I can catch it now, though. I love his storytelling with his hands. The spirits will arise. Right. It's, uh, it's really lovely. If you paint a picture with your hands, you're more likely to get expression that matches that hand-painted picture. Let's talk a little bit about this kind of stage. This is often referred to as a thrust stage because a portion of it goes out into the audience. And I loved getting to perform on this kind of stage because it really lets you interact with your audience, with your people right there. I love it when singers, uh, guitarists, instrumentalists, when anybody comes out here and really just is right there with the crowd. It's amazing. It also can be super intimidating because the people are right there. Uh, a lot of times in theaters, you can look out and maybe pick exit signs in the back and that feels, uh, feels a little less intimidating. It's a, more of a blur. Uh, really looking at somebody in their eyes, reacting to what their face is expressing uh, or just you know maybe seeing that sign right there with them. That can be really energizing, but it also can sort of knock you off of a center. But I'm guessing that all of these guys have had so much experience that it's not going to waver them whatsoever. Getting to interact with people like this is just gonna energize them and excite them. So it's so cool. I love it, love it, love it when I see thrust stages. <sighs> way Kiski onsets these high notes. You see the way he's leaning into that front leg? I've seen so many operatic tenors do this same thing where they're like almost kneeling in the stage, like taking up the energy from it, um, like lunging a little bit, like I'm going to pull all of my support from the stage. And that's partly because the very, very lowest muscles that you use for support are like down in your hips there, uh, your pelvic floor muscles. Those are the lowest ones that can control the recession of the diaphragm back in. So that's important when you're singing a really high note that you feel engaged all the way down. And if you can feel like you're engaged into the floor, that's even more helpful. And that makes it so the diaphragm doesn't suddenly uh, go up and puff a bunch of air up. If you have a bunch of air hit your larynx, you're very likely to crack. Uh, and on a high note, those the vocal folds are going wacka, wacka, wacka so quickly that if a bunch of air suddenly tries to come through, they're likely just to go and then you crack. So seeing his posture like this, the way he's grabbing that energy from the bottom and then onsetting that high note is so impressive and right on. Love the crime bomb. I just want to say.
say I love the way that these two guys interact. It's um, it's so fascinating to me that uh, that Kiski not being in the band for such a long time and Andy being the lead singer, that when Kiski came back, it seems like it's such a friendly thing. Sometimes band members or singers can get catty and it just seems like there's wonderful camaraderie and almost like a brotherhood that's happening on stage right now that is great to see. Okay, uh, let's keep going. That's fantastic. The way that he slid up almost sounded like an electric guitar. And you can even hear, it sounds like he, at the very top, like almost goes towards an A vowel to help keep that really bright buzz on it. One more time. Wow. That was great. Oh, such a cool section. I love hearing the two guys and how they storytell a little bit differently. Um, Andy really adds more, again, more grit into it, like a little more rawr moments. <laughs> and Michael seems to play with the, um, it's like the pitch and like driving consonants through the pitch in a different way. Door, is it real? Oh, let's go back a little more. Hey! No, back more. I love that little break you did there. Looks like a great octave jump. <laughs> I love that. So good. Oh, that chromatic section made me cringe. It sounds so creepy. Also, I just keep wondering if like, you get ankle cramps when you do blast beats, because I think I would. That sounds hard. Ooh. Cool and creepy. Oh. Okay, that was that was such an unexpected and cool transition right there. Uh, 
I'm going to go back and listen to it again. I was loving uh, the different takes on how they're expressing themselves vocally. It's just fascinating. It almost sounds like um, you get a little more breath in the tone of Andy, uh, and he'll use that as like uh, a way to add like a bite off of something, and you get a little more cry in the tone of Michael Kiske. So it's very, very interesting. I think it's just like a great example of how two fantastic singers can deliver the same thing in a fantastic way. I'm loving every single moment they have in harmony as well. I feel like this is a, a soundtrack to something. Um, maybe to somebody running through a haunted house, for example. That section that slowed down was, it was just made you really want to drop back and take it all in. And then when it sped up again, I was like, yeah, let's, let's do that. I like the way that all of these transitions, um, they don't take a lot of time to happen. They're pretty quick. It's not total snap but it gives you like just enough time to be on board with the next section, which is pretty cool. This is a perfect example of how Kiski has a little more cry in the sound. Did you hear him, the way he cried off of the end of that? And when he sings in the lows, it's like it has just a little bit more closure on the chords overall, which is helping it to be um, a more condensed sound. And then when we heard Andy come in, you could hear it, like already he's moving with the growls and uh, then having a little more air in the voice. I love that cry off. <laughs> oh, what's the ending? Oh, it has. It's like, it's like they're two different characters here. It's fascinating. It feels like, um, uh, oh, I, I, it sounds like some like demon's voice when Andy sings. So he said he is a snake. So I think that Andy is like representing like more of a devilly character, maybe from Garden of Eden. Maybe I'm way off on that, but it's really it's uh, it sounds like you've got those two characters going back and forth here. Corrupter of man. Save me from evil 
save you from the evil. Yeah, definitely evil like Overlord. Wow, those are so high notes in that harmony. <laughs> I love the way that they are connecting eye to eye, like seeing into each other there. And I also feel so impressed at this point by the endurance. That is just such a long time to be belting high notes like this. It's crazy. It's crazy. And the energy too. Oh, let's go back a little bit. Look at that. <laughs> I guess that was a serpent tongue. Ooh. Ooh, that was such a cool part with the slidey slides. Hashtag slidey slides. Ooh. <laughs> It's like you're having like a, you're like running along in a video game and you're like boing and then it's some like weird boingy thing that makes it twist and pitch bend, which is really cool. I know everything in my mind can somehow be made into a video game and that's a good thing. That means that I'm having a lot of fun in life. <laughs> right back. <laughs> Melody, nice. And that's like straight out of a Beethoven concerto right there. It feels very, I love it. Like it's as if Beethoven were being played on electric instruments instead. Nice wine band. It happened there again, just very, very slight where they coordinated their vibratos one more time. These guys, uh, it seems like they've nurtured a very similar rate and width of vibrato, which is really fascinating to hear. waiting for you. I love, love that like spooky high moment with both of them just like 
all out there. That's so good. Uh, I also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, this feeling <laughs> that both of them are having this line on top of the music again. They're getting in so many words here, but the, the consonants, even as they're driving through them, it's like they make the consonants a part of the line. A lot of times people take get to consonants and they stop the energy there. Instead, they're singing through them and often probably devoting even more energy to go through those consonants so that they can keep a really steady line going. Uh, consonants naturally are going to be stopping the airflow and the sound flow in some way, right? If you have a consonant, it's usually involving your mouth closing, so not as much sound can exit. So it's fascinating to hear both of them just really energizing so much through those consonants and hearing them doing it in a really similar way too. It's pretty awesome. We're gonna go back to the really high moment again. I love that part. <laughs> oh, another one. <gasps> yes, more. More? Another? Yes. You guys haven't sustained enough high notes yet, right? We should just give you some like O's and sustain them in harmony for a longer time. Just keep going. Oh my gosh. And you see Michael, because he's over there, he's just like, like really pulling up the energy from the stage there. Oh man, this must be so exhausting. <laughs> And Andy's stance is also like really wide. It's kind of that same horse stance that Bruce Dickinson has, right? Very, very spread apart. Again, really in the stage for support. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the animation. A little like it's like a little run at the very end. Oh, it's good. Yeah, that was fantastic. I just loved getting to hear both of them sing and both of them sing really, really, really well. Oh, it's so cool to listen to the differences and say, yeah. That's because there's so many different ways to do something and make it really awesome and great. And having the two of them together, I think just really enhanced the song. I haven't heard it with just one person, obviously, but I love those harmonies. They're so good. And the high notes together too. Oh boy, so many good things. And I loved their interactions on stage as well. Fantastic. This song is awesome. I loved the different movements in it. It was very intense, uh, but it also was uh, had that video game haunted house aspect to it, which was super fun. Oh, it really gets your blood pumping, but it makes me smile at the same time, not like I'm scared, just totally rocking out and enjoying Halloween. What a great band. I feel like it's amazing that I didn't know them for so long. It's just delightful to hear them and I hope to hear a lot more of them so make comments down below letting me know 
which song you would like to see next. And also, please don't forget to watch these all the way through. We provide links to the actual video so you can watch it all the way through without my interruptions and then enjoy it for yourself. So uh, if you would like to make more recommendations, put that in the comments down below, or you can find me on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays here on YouTube for live premieres. There are no ads during live premieres and there's an awesome live chat when we get to talk with each other. It's pretty cool. You can also find me on Patreon and at thecharismaticvoice.com where I have classes about singing and music appreciation. I hope to see you soon. Bye.